Hey, welcome back to Nerdcrave. Today we're talking about the mighty PS3 and six great racing games that we absolutely love. I say we because I've got Sean from the Electronic Emotions program coming on the channel today to discuss racing games on the PS3 with me. Stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs> Hey Aaron, thanks for letting me back on your channel. I'm really excited to have this completely natural live conversation with you. Oh, you did not break out the Starfleet hat. Brother, it's on like Donkey Kong. I know we don't have a lot of time, but I do want to talk about my uh, racing game history a little bit. I've always enjoyed racing games. I've always felt they pushed the graphics quite a bit since they're mostly simplistic, right? I mean, you just drive, right? So they've always kind of uh, taken that opportunity to be better graphically or have interesting controls with actual wheels and such. Um, I've always found them to be fun, but I've always treated them like a distraction until I could play real games. Until about the PS3 era, where I don't know what it was, but something just made me just really admit I loved racing games and uh, dove right into them. Now, speaking of diving right into them, Let's talk about them. All right, Sean, I'll let you go first. So what is your first great PlayStation 3 racing game? Okay, so the game I'm going to talk about here is Split Second. I think the game that really crossed the line for me to make me admit my love for racing games was Burnout Revenge. Loved it on the PS2. So I got this game really cheap, Split Second, for probably about $5. I never paid a lot for games back then. And uh, it was really fun. It looks like a generic arcade racer, but it's actually a mix between Burnout and Mario Kart in a way. Uh, Burnout, because you drive dangerously and such to build up this meter, which you can then use to unleash attacks on your enemies like Mario Kart. But unlike turtle shells, even the blue turtle shells, uh, you wreck the environment around you. So maybe your opponent's ahead of you driving by a gas station, and you're like, I'm blowing that up. So you do that and they get crashed and explode. And then if you build your meter up all the way and right, wait for the right part of the track, you might be able to do a huge destruction like uh, blowing up an airport or make a plane come down. And it really changes the whole dynamic of the, of the course. And we've seen that before in Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed. But in this case, you're the one doing destruction. And I think that makes a huge difference when you're enjoying a game like that. It's not scripted you're doing it and seeing something like that happen to your opponents is just at your whim is so much more rewarding than going here's a shell not, not, not to put down Mario Kart because those are probably better than this but this is still really fun and adrenaline filled excitement right all right buddy great suggestion okay so for my first suggestion as a game that absolutely blew my mind it took racing games to a whole nother level for me and that is need for speed the run i'll tell you what this game has a story that you wouldn't expect in a racing game it has a progression a linear progression it's not a series of races it's not a series of street races or challenges like so many of the other need for speed games or uh, you know, stuff like Forza or Gran Turismo. This has a linear progression from the start of the game to the finish of the game where you're racing across the entire country. Obviously, it's truncated into kind of a six or eight hour experience. It's not, uh, you know, dozens of hours long racing across the country, but you go through so many different environments. The graphics are fantastic, and it's really cool to, to go through these really long segments of racing uh, whether you're in the mountains, in the snow, in the desert, uh, going through forests and, you know, uh, in the eastern end of the states and stuff, you're going from one end of the states to the other. I think it's from Los Angeles to New York or something like that. It's been a while since I played it, but this game blew my mind. I can't tell you how much fun it is, how great the graphics are for the PS3. Just absolutely fantastic. The only thing that I really didn't like about this game was the really annoying, uh, quick time events uh, during the cutscenes and a cutscene would end and it would transition back into the gameplay and there's all these stupid quick time events where you've got to push X at a certain time in order to activate something. I hate quick time events, but it was not enough to spoil this absolute gem of a game. All right, Sean, what have you got next for us? Now this game, Burnout Paradise. 
So, uh, racing games were a distraction for me. I didn't really get into them. And then Burnout Revenge came along, and I loved it. So when I saw the demo for Burnout Paradise show up on the PlayStation 3 store, I was, yeah. And then I downloaded it, and I'm like, yeah. Then I played it, and I'm like, Ugh. They changed so much from what Burnout Revenge was, and I guess Burnout 3. People knew that it was a great series, and I just I kind of shunned it. Whatever, I shouldn't have, but I like it now. Uh, but Burnout Paradise, uh, it was open world. The crash mode was gone. There was not, like, set laps and courses. It was just like, go from this point to that point. And I didn't really care. I wasn't sure if I was going to buy it or not, but my wife remembered how much I like Burnout Revenge, and she got me Burnout Paradise. She's gotten so many games for me that I might not have otherwise that would have been huge regrets to not. In this case, Burnout Paradise. Uh, I played it for a bit, and it grew on me, and it grew on me, and I don't know. I might... I'm not, I'm not going to commit to this. But I might say that it's my favorite racing game ever. If I did have a negative, I think I did just mention it, it's, the crash mode is different. Those were beautiful modes, and there's been some games since that kind of uh, bring them back, which is nice. But this game has just a, you just kind of bounce around and do destruction. It's fun, it really is, but it's easy and repetitive, especially if you're going to want to high score every street, which I did. You know, I was always hoping there'd be a great follow-up to Burnout Paradise, and uh, Criterion, the guys who made all the Burnout games, uh, they went on to make Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit, and Most Wanted, and they're great. Uh, I really had a lot of fun playing as the cops in uh, Most uh, Hot Pursuit, but they just weren't quite Burnout Paradise. Maybe it's because they were limited, because they were forced to use a Need for Speed title, and they had people breathing down their necks. I don't know, but wonderful, wonderful game play it get all the dlc or the, there's a complete package too so just every bit of it just if you haven't played it that's the one man i'm gonna have to try that game out sean that looks really cool so for my next selection uh my number two here a super obvious game this is not by any means a hidden gem but a game that means so much to me and that is gran turismo 6 gran turismo 6 is the absolute epitome of the Gran Turismo series. It takes everything that you love about Gran Turismo to the absolute nth degree. Uh, just absolutely fantastic graphics, tons of tracks, tons of cars, fantastic customization options, so many uh, interesting challenges and stuff that previous versions of Gran Turismo did not have. I'm a huge fan of the Gran Turismo series. I've played pretty much every game all the way through, some multiple times. 2, 4, and 6 are my ultimate favorites. Uh, you know, kind of the second game on each system, I guess, where they kind of perfected what they could do on those systems, but Gran Turismo 5 was a bit of a letdown. There was not that much content, but Gran Turismo 6 is mind-blowing. It takes hundreds of hours to complete this game, if you've got the skills to do it. Fantastic weather physics, fantastic uh, graphics, fantastic racing physics, and some really interesting cars. There's a whole setup in here where major manufacturers provided concept cars specifically for the game, and some of these cars are just out of this world. Uh, gorgeous, super performing, just absolutely a joy to play this game. If you haven't played this game, and you haven't played any other Gran Turismo games on PlayStation consoles, I would highly recommend picking this game up for the probably $5 to $10 that you can pick it up use. Uh, absolutely should not be missed on the PS3. Motorstorm. I love it. I hate it. I love it because it's very interesting. The strategy is wonderful by picking your vehicle or, or uh, being forced to use a particular vehicle and then taking that information with who you're racing against on a particular track and just find the best way through that course to get to the end. It's just, it's really good, and for the most part of the game, it's really satisfying. I'm getting near the end, I'm going for first place on every track, and the rubber band physics in this thing, it's terrible. It's at the point now where it doesn't matter how good or bad I do for the first three to four laps sometimes. It's the last few seconds on the last lap where it's like, Okay, I guess I won. I guess I lost. It, and there's, I can't make heads or tails over what I'm doing differently. So, uh, 
it's a beautiful game, a wonderful game, great everything about it until the rubber banding. Um, I'm trying to finish this one before I go to the sequels, but I think they're going to be better, I hope, you know, where they might fix that. I've played a bit of Arctic Edge on the PSP, and it's it feels wonderful as well. They're a wonderful series, even if you don't complete them. They're just fun to play. Thanks, Sean. Another great choice, man. Uh, so, for my third choice here, and this one's a little bit offbeat, but uh, <laughs> the karting genre has experienced over the last 10 years such a, a, a huge influx of subpar crappy karting games. You know, anything from Hello Kitty Cruisers to some of the Sonic games that were really not very good. Some of them were good, but uh, anyway, Little Big Planet Karting. Let me tell you, this is a hidden gem on the system. Uh, you know, you wouldn't think of Little Big Planet as being a hidden gem. It was a pretty popular franchise on the PS3 and coming onto the PS4 as well. But the karting game does not get enough love. The graphics typical to Little Big Planet are absolutely gorgeous. They're so cute and colorful and vibrant and the textures are so clean. Uh, but the racing in this is genuinely good. So it's pretty similar to Mario Kart as most karting games are. Uh, but you've got the unique kind of sack boy sort of look going on, and as far as your weapons are concerned, instead of getting, you know, turtle shells and that sort of thing, you get some really cool power-ups where you actually get guns that you're able to shoot behind you or in front of you, and uh, some of those guns shoot like electric shocks, and some of them shoot like big cannon bullets and, uh, and you know, bombs and that sort of thing, and then there's actually one pretty similar to the uh, bullet bill power-up in Mario Kart where you get this big kind of boxing glove that you ride and you go whooshing through the levels and stuff. But you know what? The drifting mechanics in this are actually really spot on. I think better, I think the actual racing, the drifting mechanics and the driving mechanics, I think are actually better in this game than they are in most versions of Mario Kart. Again, another hidden gem that should not be missed. Absolutely. Thank you for having me back on the channel again. And thank you to your sexy fan base for not requesting that you don't have me back on the channel again. I'll see you later, guys. Thanks, Sean, for coming on the channel, man. Absolutely love having you around. Uh, loved your choices, man. Uh, it was great working with you. If you haven't checked out Sean's channel, it's the Electronic Emotions Program on YouTube. Uh, he's just getting started, so he doesn't have a whole lot of videos up there, but definitely go give him a subscribe. He's a great friend of mine, and he's got some awesome gaming opinions and stuff to share with you so keep track of him in the coming months because he's definitely an up-and-comer anyways guys thanks so much for watching like the video if you would it helps out a ton i appreciate it subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next video stay classy